the Shimadzu TOCL machine for total carbon, total organic carbon, total inorganic carbon, and total nitrogen analysis. Instruction for preparation of machine, running calibrations, and analyzing samples. First one must turn on the power unit for the whole apparatus. Following, the computer and the TOCL unit should be turned on. In order to load test tubes into the machine, one must first remove the ASI cover, which slides off. The tray contained under the cover is numbered so that samples may be placed in order corresponding to the sample tables created on the program, which will be shown later. Once the test tubes have been loaded, the ASI cover must be replaced. In order to open the TOCL program, one must select the TOCL control icon on the home screen. This will offer a few options. The sample table editor should be selected for the desired actions. Once you have the window open, you should right click on the HW setting selection on the left side of the window. This will allow you to look at the instrument option. In the instrument section, look at the TOC and make sure the furnace is turned on to 720 degrees Celsius. It will take the machine a few minutes to warm up. Once you have completed this, you want to select the HW settings again and select connect. This will connect the machine and the computer. After this, one should select the monitor option in the top right corner of the window. This shows the status of various portions of the machine. Once the furnace has reached the appropriate temperature, all of these functions should reach OK. This means the machine is ready to go. In addition, the machine itself will turn green. In order to perform a calibration, one must select the calibration selection from the options on the left side of the window. Then one should select the New option. Once selecting New, you may press Next on the first window presented. There are two options for calibrations. In order to perform a calibration for multiple standards of different concentrations, just select the normal option on the window and continue. Next, you may select the type of test associated with your calibration. One may choose a total carbon, a total organic carbon, a total inorganic carbon, or a total nitrogen calibration. In this window, you will also give a file name to the calibration you are performing. In the following window, you have the option to adjust the number and size of washes and injections if it is so desired. In the next window, one must add a calibration point for each of the standards of different dilutions that you are placing in the machine. It is best to assign these known standard points in order of ascending concentration. In the top right corner of this window, one must also add the size of injection they desire for the standards being used for the calibration. For most of my standards, I have consistently used injections of 50 microliters. You may now proceed through the next step. You have successfully completed the programming of the calibration. Now one may prepare to run the calibration. The other calibration that may be performed is done through auto dilution. Only one standard is needed and the machine will dilute this standard to the appropriate concentrations desired for the calibration curve. As in the previous calibration setup, you may proceed through the first selection window to the next. However, in the next window, for an auto dilution, one must select the auto dilution option underneath the normal option rather than selecting the normal option as was done for the multiple standards. In the following window, you may select the type of calibration you are performing, and you may name the file as was done in the previous calibration setup example. In the following window, you have the option to adjust the number and size of washes and injections if it is so desired. In the next window, you enter the calibration points in one by one as before. However, in this setup, you are entering the concentrations you want to dilute from your one known standard, rather than points from multiple standards. 
So when adding each point, you will enter the value of the known standard concentration and the concentration you would like the machine to dilute to. Instead, you are having the machine create the multiple standards for you. In addition, do not forget to place an injection volume value in the top right corner. I would recommend injection value volumes of 50 microliters. After completing this step, you have successfully completed the setup of an auto dilution calibration. Now one must run the calibrations they have set up to acquire the points necessary for a calibration curve. In order to do so, go over to the left side of the window and select the sample table option next to the calibration option. When you select this option, continue through the first window and then a table will appear. After pulling this table up, select a row and then select insert from the toolbar at the top and select the calibration option and select the calibration file you created. This will place your designated calibration points into the sample table in one row. If the first calibration we place in the sample table is the multiple known standard calibration, then we can assign each file of the standard its own vial number on the program so that it corresponds with their location in the machine. Inserting the auto dilution calibration into a sample table follows the same procedure as the previous example. However, when inserting an auto dilution calibration from one known standard into a sample table rather than inserting a calibration with multiple known standards, the vials do not have to correspond with each dilution. Instead, you just place enough vials into the tray so that the machine has enough of the single known standard to dilute from. When I have made calibration curves from five dilutions before, I usually use about two test tubes to ensure there is enough of the standard to dilute from. Just make sure those vials correspond with the assignments in the program. Once you have completed all of these steps associated with running a calibration, one must reconnect the machine via the connect option on the right side of the top bar. Once the machine and program are reconnected, you may select the start option directly to the right of the connect option on the right hand side of the top bar. After selecting this option, you may create a name to save the calibration under. Then you may select an action for the machine once the run is over. I usually select the shutdown instrument option so that if tests run through the night, I don't leave the furnace running for an extended period of time. In order to view your results from the calibration run, you may select the file under the sample tables. When looking over the results of your calibration run, you will see multiple readings for each calibration point in a table you may view by selecting an option in the type right corner of your window. The machine automatically averages the readings for each point and excludes outlying readings. If you select the third graph option in the top left corner of the window, you can see the calibration curve. If a good linear graph is presented, the calibration ran smoothly and may be used to assist in sample analysis. When performing sample analysis, one will also select the sample table option on the left side of the window. Then one will select new, as was also done in the setup for running a calibration. You may proceed through the first window and the table will then be put before you. You may then select the insert option on the top toolbar, but rather than selecting calibration curve, one will select sample or multiple samples. I usually select multiple samples so I can run the same tests on a variety of samples. You will then have to select the proper method file for the test you would like to run. If you look over the method files, you can see whether they are for total carbon, total organic carbon, total organic carbon high sensitivity, total nitrogen, or total organ inorganic carbon. Once you have selected the proper method, you must select the proper calibration curve file. You may look over these in the same way to select the proper calibration that suits the test you wish to run. One may then proceed to the next window and enter the number of sample vials and the vial number for which they began placing the vials. You then want to ensure the vials are properly labeled by looking at the tray diagram. One may then reconnect the machine and the program and then select Start. Once Start is selected, you may save the program file and select an action for the machine once the sampling is finished. Again, I would recommend the shutdown option once the sample analysis is completed. In order to view the results of a sample analysis, one may select the file from the sample option on the left side of the window. 
When looking over sample analysis results, one may view the average concentration results for all the samples at once in a table, or one may view the readings for each of the samples individually by selecting another option in the top right corner of the window.